giving the handshake. Where's the gate? We can't see the game yet. Um, at the bottom. There it is. There it is. Ooh. Magnus needing a draw, but doesn't feel like playing for it. Yeah. You should have done as a classical. I think it's, it's quite funny actually. Now is it a must draw? Why, why yeah. do you mix it up now? It's going for the hippopotamus. Yep. But often what we find in these hippos is that uh, well, not now, I was going to say that white can actually find themselves on the wrong side of a low pass. So, okay, instead we are seeing Ariane handle this very aggressively. Three pawns, attack. Is there a name for this attack against the hippo? Appearances it appears it's the Austrian attack, but I don't think the hippo is popular enough that some lights have their own names. Bishop d3. I should mention the hippo setup where you put all the pawns here and your pieces in a symmetrical fashion. Then you're worse, but you've made your first 50 moves really quickly, so that counts as something. Yep, that's a perfect open. But Magnus, of course, is allowed to deviate from classic hippo strategy. No C5 here. The D5, I guess, why is much better. I also probably also studied Aryan's previous Armageddon like against Wesley where if it became a bit uncharted territory, Aryan did commit some mistakes. So that's probably his approach here. I, I was listening to your Chicken Chess podcast. Yeah, Chicken this Chess. This morning but... I was listening to episode two and you guys were discussing 103. Now I must admit, I thought that F3 was just a trolling move and that Magnus had played it with very little study. It turns out that Peter Heiner had been sent to study the variation. That's still oh. nonsense, but uh, yeah. they usually work work on the nonsense to make it more, more bearable. Yeah. But of course Peter, I guess he's also obliged to defend and praise whatever random trolling decisions Magnus takes, so it's hard get a straight answer on Yeah, that's we'll true. That's true, but I mean, it's kind of handy if Magnus has already decided in the morning, hey, I'm going to be playing the hippo.
here is is it possible for black to actually play queen takes pawn no he doesn't he takes care of his king rook to e7 b3 played and now the knight maneuvers itself i'm a little bit worried for Ariane's position because that knight could find itself with g5 at the right time and uh well f3 and h3 looked like great squares Okay, the position is so crazy and Magnus just over one minute on the clock. They're on move 33, so no one second increment just yet. So this is Marianne looking at that light square bishop. Rook so D5. These pawns aren't really moving. Those knights c5. To which the knight takes a fight. Knight g5, by the way. Really bad news. In fact, that is the winning blow. Knight takes pawn. It's going to win the game for Arya. Does it? Oh. Yeah, it has, it's going for it. It's going for it. And that's it. Oh my god. Pawn takes knight. Queen check. And now it's completely hopeless. King has to go to a eight for now. Well, Patreon TV is getting very exciting. It is very it's exciting. Yelling. Yeah, because it's not often that the number two beats the world champion. It's just game over. Like, Rook D8 is, is there, Rook F8. Yeah, and uh, Magnus oh. shaking his head. The seconds are Besides. ticking down, and that's it. Ariantari has beaten Magnus Carlsen in the Armageddon. Oh, incredible, incredible stuff from Ariantari. Yeah, he's, he's trying not to show too much emotion, but he must be quite pleased with himself after this one. Yeah, for Magnus, that's a, that's a setback. It's not gigantic because it's only half a point difference in the Armageddon. That's also unpleasant because now it's like when he lost to Pragnan and the Champions Chess Tour. Now, whenever the Arian context comes up, people will mention 